Yo, so in this video, we're going to be making Lego huh? realistic. We're going to explore the insides of a minifig all the way from bones and different organs to his brain to see what bro is actually built from. We're also going to let our imagination run wild and see just how far we can take it by making some other weird but realistic creations. So get your popcorn and enjoy the show. <laughs> So to get some inspiration, I bought this model of a human body and we can see all the different organs and stuff. But the main structure of it all is the bones. So we should cut a minifig in half. I'm sorry, buddy. And this will give us an empty shell that we can work with. So we could just be lazy and use an existing Lego skeleton minifig and just slot it inside. But I want a bit more detail than that. So let's start from scratch. And I'm just going to simply try to remake a skeleton by using individual bones. I started making some bones for the feet and initially I only gave him a main bone and then one big toe. But that didn't look quite right. So I actually ended up splitting the toe into two. Now he's got all the balance he needs. So next I worked my way up and added some vertical bones to make his leg. We got the ankle, the shin bone, then a smaller bone, and then this big thigh femur bone. Fun fact, it's actually the strongest bone in your body. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty strong. All right, and then we can top it all off with a little kneecap. Cool, so we have a full minifig bone leg now. All right, and now we can quickly model a hip bone, which will be used to connect the leg to the rest of the body later on. So a quite important part of your skeleton is the spine. It's basically the piece that holds everything together. So to make it for our little friend, I basically made a cube-like bone, then copied it a bunch of times. But the higher you go, the smaller the bones get, just like in an actual human spine. And then I also wanted to add in that spine-like curve to the bones. Cool, so our boy has a spine now. So next we need to add some ribs, which also act as extra support. So I made five of these on each side. Actual humans have like 12 of them, but a minifig is a lot smaller and blocky, so it should be enough. Okay, so I wanted to take a short break from looking at the insides of a minifig, so I also bought this mysterious box. Ah, oh, weird, it says fragile on it. All right, and after carefully unboxing it, it contains a bunch of these tiny real life bricks. It's said that these things are literally like 12 times smaller than an actual brick, which means they actually look like Lego pieces, but are just super realistic instead. And I can stack them together to make a little wall where a minifig is able to use it as shelter now, but are they strong enough to survive a full speed Lego train heading in their direction? Um, I mean, maybe if we use something to hold the bricks together, they'll actually be stronger. Like if we look online, people build some crazy things with them. But I'm too impatient to be doing mini bricklaying. Instead, let's see if we can use these bricks as dominoes. So I spent a bit of time carefully placing the bricks vertically. All right, let's give this a go. Damn, that definitely satisfied my brain. But what if we build a mini tower with them and see how high we can actually go? It would be a shame if someone was to accidentally knock it over. But yeah, these mini real bricks are pretty cool. And the big part of being a minifig is the ability to grab stuff. And obviously to do that, you need an actual arm. So I took an x-ray of my own arm using this special Lego camera that I found. Damn, this thing is pretty cool. And we can see that it's basically made up of a few bones. So I did some magic and made some more minifig bones that we can just simply assemble into the right shape. Nice, we got the arm, but now we need a hand. So I made some small but wider bones to create the claw-like shape of a minifig's hand. But I didn't really like how this looked. So same as with the toes, I actually split one side into two, which means that now we have two fingers and then an opposing thumb. Now we've got the maximum clutch power possible. And we can hold a bunch of different things, Bruh. like this blocust special green milk. Mmm, tasty. Oh yeah, and to support the whole arm, I also made the shoulder bone that actually wraps around the top of the arm and holds it in place. So now you should understand why it's so damn hard to disconnect a real minifig arm. All right, so this is the part I'm the most excited about. This so I brought in some raw calcium and started molding it into shape. Like even including a little portion for the stud on the top. And then I pulled out a bit on the bottom to make room for the teeth later. And we also need a couple of eye holes. Nice! It looks pretty good so far. But next let's add in the jawbone and make sure that it's able to connect to the rest of the skull. So now it's movable but it still doesn't look complete because we need to add in the chompy chompers. So I used the cube and turned it into a tooth. Then copied that a few times I made each one slightly smaller. Bro is looking goofy. So let's also do the same thing for the bottom jaw and now he can probably bite down on things. Just make sure not to stick your finger in his mouth. So I got another package in the mail and this time it's full of these tiny realistic grass pieces. And just like the bricks from earlier, these are a fraction of the size of the real thing. I also got this green kinetic sand so we can use that as a first base layer of grass and then add the grass pieces on top. So now we can make any Lego set look more alive. My mum told me to go outside for once and touch some grass. Bruh. Even the minifigs can enjoy the beauty of nature now. So if we combine the brick pieces to make a little countryside wall and add a lot of these grass pieces, we can actually make a cute little realistic Lego environment. And now the minifig can just lie down in the middle of it all and just relax. Damn, so much for wanting a bit of peace.
but the inside of this bloke's head is quite literally empty. Like, there's not a single thought in here. So to fix that, I very carefully cut out a chunk of a skull, and after moving it out of the way, I started modeling a brain to go inside of it. Then we can draw on these tube thingies, which is actually really satisfying to do. Kind of reminds me of this chewing gum roll I used to have as a kid, but I bet it doesn't taste as nice. Then after some final adjustments, I copied the brain half to the other side, because brains have two sides, and now our boy can finally have a high IQ. Bro is a literal genius, but he still can't feel anything. That's because he needs some nerves running through his body, which are basically like wires that carry signals, and some areas have more of them, making them more sensitive, like the hands or feet. So now the minifig is able to feel pain if he steps on a Lego brick, or the warmth of a fire in his hand. Hey yo, there's a fire! So next up, we have a bunch of random body parts, and they're all essential for you to be alive right now, but I only want to borrow a few of them. So I made some lungs to go inside of the minifig, then made the tube thingy so air can actually flow through it, so our boy can take deep breaths now and even try holding his breath underwater. And just under the lungs, I modeled a little stomach, and once again made a tube that goes all the way to his mouth. So now he can swallow all the glizzies physically possible. Well, at least until he runs out of space in his belly. So to fix that, we can also add some intestines. These are basically really long tube thingies that are inside of your body, and their job is to digest just all the food that you eat. Human intestines are actually around 26 feet long on average. Yep, that's quite insane. And our little friend now has them too. Enjoy the food, mate. But you might have noticed there's a fair bit of empty space still inside of his body. This is usually where the other organs like the liver and stuff would go. Hey, yo, this kind of looks like pepperoni. Let's give it a taste. <laughs> But he's just a minifig. He doesn't need any of that. Alright, so I just thought of another way that we could make an actual real life minifig more realistic. What if we use an app on my phone and walk around me to scan my head while I just awkwardly stand there? Then once we got the scan, we can send it over to my laptop and do some cleanup, then get the big boy printer up and running, and wait for a few minutes. And just like that, we ended up with this mini realistic version of my head that we can actually slot onto a minifig torso. So now this is literally mini blocust. Bro literally looks identical to me. And then we can also give him this more realistic multi-joint minifig with actual mini mini fingers. Damn, bro looks like a human. Alright, so the insides of this minifig are looking pretty good. But I just realized that he can't really move at all, because he literally doesn't have any muscles. Bro can't even stand up on his own. So let's make his life a bit better and start making some muscles. Like these toe muscles, some leg and hip muscles, some core muscles. Bro definitely didn't skip shoulder and neck day. Then he's got a few muscles in his arms, and big finger muscles for maximum clutch power when holding stuff. And then I also made sure to give him some jaw muscles, for all the chewing he needs to do. But yeah, bro is built different now and he can use his new strength to do a bunch of different things. Even like sick looking backflips. Let's go! But we did forget one thing, because right now the minifig is technically lifeless. The boy is literally missing a heart. So I dug out a reference heart that we can use and started modeling it. It was a bit of a sweaty process because I wanted to make sure I get this right. But after carefully molding stuff into shape, we can slot the heart into his chest and it should start beating any second now. Come on, you got this. Um, yeah, I think that might have failed. Oh, never mind, there we go. Damn, that's a strong heart. So yeah, he's actually alive now, even though half of his body is exposed. But if you wanted to know what an inside of a minifig actually looks like, this is it. Well, thanks for watching, and let me know what else I should do with Lego in the comments below.